All right, uh, more Houthi rebel attacks on uh, largely U.S. vessels in the Red Sea, but not exclusively U.S. vessels. Now, they were all repelled, but better than 14 of them over the last 24 hours, I believe north of 40 uh, just this past week. And that has prompted a number of big container ship companies, including uh, Maersk and a host of others from Hapag Lloyd, to say, you know what, the better part of valor is just to avoid these waters altogether. And that could have an impact on international shipping and commerce because that is the, the the means by which a lot of these ships move around not only that area but uh, then trade well beyond that area not exclusively to israel uh iran is already threatening those that are making their way to israel but again a good many of these vehicles have have no plans to to go on to israel they're just there and and the, the threat is that they shouldn't be what do we do because we have not responded to this latest wave of attacks they're occurring at 10 times the rate our response is lieutenant general david dula joins us right now general good to have you um what do you make of the growing frequency of these attacks um well neil um i think that a strong u.s response could have prevented this situation but the Biden administration has been hesitant to answer the group's attacks over concern that might result in a broader regional conflict. And what's happened is that the United States now is the one being deterred by the Houthis' actions, not the other way around. Um, I think it's important to dig in just a little bit more into this whole notion of deterrence. It's really the product of three factors, capability times will, times adversary perception of those capabilities and will. And if the first two of those factors are missing or inordinately low, or the adversary doesn't believe that the U.S. has the will to use our capabilities, then deterrence fails. And quite frankly, this is the current situation and the proofs and the action that commercial shipping, as you just reported, um, has taken in halting their transit of the Red Sea. You know what's weird about it, though, General? I'm sure... Uh... Iran knows our reluctance not to take this up to the level of attacking Iran itself. I, I get that, and I, I guess I understand the risks, and you're, you're the military expert, not, not, not me, uh, of, of escalating something that uh, I guess people fear could be World War III. Uh, but if Iran knows that, it's going to keep doing that. It's going to keep funding proxies that continue doing that, right? No, absolutely. And the point here is, look, that... I understand people throw around this World War III thing, but that's really part of the information operations to tend that are imposed to try to deter the United States. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some in the United States have bought into that. I mean, come on, if you want to stop the attacks against the shipping, you take out the source of the attacks in Yemen. Oh, we can do this. That's not going to start World War III. The fact of the matter is that Iran and its proxies are only going to be affected by the use of force. They don't respond to finessed rhetoric or to pinprick attacks with little effect. Because those attacks continue when we do that. Now, the only difference in a couple of weeks ago, General Memory serves me right, is we took out, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a Houthi site or, or a Houthi sympathetic site, a proxy site in northern Iraq. But that's as close as we get. And I'm, I'm wondering uh, what would happen in your mind, if, if we if we did that, if we went into Yemen, if we if we took out, let's say, a position in Iran. Uh, well, then the Iranians and the Houthis would start paying attention. Quite frankly, there's actually, in my humble opinion, extraordinary low probability of any escalation if we took out the missile launch sites inside Yemen that the Houthis um, and their uh, Iranian supporters are using to attack shipping. I mean, it's just the logical thing to do. Um, but the deterrent effect of the Iranians on this administration is uh, uh, just encouraging to continue. And like you mentioned, this is the same situation we face with our as our military forces come under attack in Iraq and Syria. Iranian-backed militia groups have launched attacks on our positions about 100 times in just the last two months. And yeah, we've responded to some of those attacks, uh, but not in sufficient intensity uh, to halt their uh, 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 continuance. And you're quite right. That, that's the case. You can see it now because of the attacks only <laughs> pick up steam. Your observations are, are brilliant, General. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take care.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.